Hi guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Today we have a This Is Not A Top 10 episode. And uh, before I get started, I just want to say something. Uh, and that is that I really appreciate all the support and comments and every, you know, everyone kind of, um, you know, giving me well wishes and urging me to continue to do these videos. I We just passed the 500 subscriber mark, which I know doesn't really matter. I've said it many a times. I don't care about subscriber numbers. I'm not doing this for subscribers. I'm doing this just to kind of share my passion with, um, you know, the world and the fragrance community, if you will. And, you know, if some people get something out of this, even if one person gets something out of this, it's a win for me. Hopefully you'll learn about some new fragrances, you'll be able to put some new fragrances on your radar, and you'll be able to kind of get an idea of how some fragrances smell that maybe you otherwise would not have before. Uh, and so, just to get that out of the way, um, you know, again, passing the 500 subscriber mark might seem like a big deal to some people. It doesn't really matter to me because I'm not about counting subscribers, I'm about, you know, the feedback that I get from people uh, saying, hey, I bought this fragrance and I love it based on your recommendation or whatever it is. That's the kind of stuff that, you know, matters more to me than uh, than a subscriber count. You can buy subscribers. Um, and I know there's some fragrance channels that do that just to boost the subscriber number. So subscribers to me are not a, um, a sign of a, a prosperous or, or well-to-do channel. So with that out of the way, um, we're going to talk about the note of vetiver today. And vetiver is a very austere note. That's the word that comes to mind, austere. You know, some people think, what's the big deal about vetiver? It's just a plant. Um, and, you know, it, um, it's, not it, it, it's, it's not even just a plant. It's grass is what it is. Uh, but it's a special type of grass that is so complex that the fragrance smell the vetiver oil or the vetiver, vetiver absolute um, cannot be recreated in a lab. All vetiver that you smell is natural vetiver. If there's vetiver in a fragrance, it's natural. And it does something very important. It works as a fixative, which oak moss also works as a fixative. And so you have to think with oak moss being banned or at least held to 0.1%, which is a very small amount, the role of vetiver in fragrances has increased. So I want to show you my scent of the day. This is a this is a vetiver. Well, here let me let me do my usual. I don't know why I don't just do this before the video. I never learned my lesson. So this is a fragrance from Lalique called Homage Alom Voyager. This is a flanker to the original Homage Alom, and this is basically this designer take on a. Um, this is a designer take on a DNA, like, uh, if you know a fragrance like Private Label, for example, from Javoy, where it uses this vetiver and papyrus mixture. This does the exact same thing, but more in a designer way. Private Label is more niche. Private Label is the better fragrance, hands down, by far. If you're only going to get one, get Private Label, and this is discontinued. Uh, anyway, so it's getting harder and harder to find. The original bottle is clear, but... The Leek's bottles are beautiful. Look, the front and the back, it looks like this tesseract kind of thing. Um, and so this uses cardamom and bergamot in the top, patchouli, vetiver, and, and papyrus in the mid, and it's that vetiver and papyrus combo that steal the show, and then moss, amber, and vanilla. Um, very masculine, very, you know, austere fragrance, but I like Private Label more because this is more of a designer take on that DNA. Um, and one thing I should mention is there's different types of vetiver. So if you're not, if you've never, um, you know, smelled vetiver absolute, it depends what type you're smelling. If you smell uh, Haitian vetiver, it's going to be a little bit more clean. If you smell Java vetiver, it's going to be a little bit more dirty because Java vetiver grows around a volcanic area and that volcano over the years has erupted and the vetiver, the Javanese vetiver, if you will, um, gives off this, you know, smoky, extra dirty type of cord. So perfumers can use vetiver in different ways. And just like, you know, everyone says that, um, you know, rose is in every single fragrance, that every fragrance has at least a drop of rose. It feels like almost every fragrance has a drop of, of vetiver, excuse me, while I get my micro cloth, 
so I don't get any fingerprints. So I don't get any fingerprint tickets from the fingerprint police. Um, and so I could have picked probably 50 other fragrances from my collection to show you. But what we're going to do, I'm going to show you some fragrances that might surprise you that use vetiver first. Okay, so there's some crazy ones in here to begin with that are not pure vetiver pure perfumes. And then as we get to this side of the table, we're going to focus on the note of vetiver, the real vetiver perfumes. But I want to show you a few that you might be a little surprised uh, that vetiver is used to create the composition. The first one is a fragrance called French Lover. And as you can see, my handwriting there. I only have a little bit left of this perfume. But rumor is that this was created by Jean-Claude Elena. But what happened is, is he created this fragrance uh, and then he signed an exclusive contract to be the in-house perfumer of Hermes. So, um... Frederick Mall could not put his name on the bottle. So what he did is he went to Pierre Bourdon, big name in the fragrance industry, and said, hey, can you finish this perfume? Pierre Bourdon put the bow on it, put the finishing touches on it, and boom, here you go. Here's French Lover. Um, and this fragrance and Royal Oud by Creed kind of have some similarities in that they both use this Angelica and Galbanum uh, combo. So just like um, this one uses the vetiver and papyrus, French Lover uses galbanum and angelica combo with this cedar, which is also prominent in Royal Oud. So that's the other third note that's the same. But this brings in this incense um, and this oak moss and vetiver to create this almost like this forest, this this green type effect that you're out in the forest. Um, and the vetiver is also a little bit dirty here. Um, and, you know, this is the type of vetiver fragrance that in the old days, I would say that I really prefer. If you, if you, um, you know, if you would have asked me a couple years back, Ramsey, do you like vetiver as a note? I would have said no. And the reason is that it's a very complex note, and it's a very austere note. Like I said, it, it's 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 almost like keep at an arm's length. You know, I'm here and you're there, and you know we can we can be friends, but at a distance, kind of thing. Very aloof, okay. Uh, and that's not really my personality per se. Um, and so what I've come to learn is the more that I've kind of dove into perfumes, the more that I realize what a brilliant note just vetiver is on its own. You could create a vetiver perfume, uh, just out of, you could have just a vetiver absolute, put it on your skin and realize how beautiful it is. It's, it's that, um, you know, it, it's that complex and deep. There's so many aspects. It's woody, it's smoky. Um, you know, it can be clean. There's some vetivers I'll show you for summer. There's some vetivers I'll show you that are more for the colder weathers. Um, so as I have developed my, my taste in perfume, I've grown to appreciate vetiver more. Do I like a vetiver? Do I like a perfume that focuses on the note of vetiver? Not necessarily all the time. I have to really be in the right mood. Sometimes it comes off like this uh, green celery type of chord, okay? Uh, and sometimes that, that will put you off. It depends on the weather, too. Um, but also, because vetiver is in so many fragrances, excuse me, vetiver is in so many fragrances, um, it is hard to say I'm not going to buy anything with vetiver because it's in everything. Let me give you an example. There's vetiver in this. This is Koros. So Koros mixes with that clean, dirty vibe. It's got the animalic honey and civet. But the, the earthy part of Koros is, is the vetiver. Um, it's the vetiver working with the, um, the honey and the civet and the musk and the leather and all that good stuff that everyone loves. Vetiver is a part of this. Um, and it, it's not something that ever gets mentioned, but there's, the, there's vetiver in Koros. There's also vetiver in this. Leather Oud. Leather Oud has that stinky vibe to it. Um, you know, it gives off this animalic tone, let's say. 
Demashi's best work, potentially. Um, and this has this leather and oud, obviously, but it also has cedar and civet and vetiver. This is another civet vetiver combo that is a is. You know, I, if you said this is Demashi's best work, I would not argue with you. Let's put it that way. Uh, I wish I had an uh, an older bottle, but. Um, you know, I don't get that sand note in the base, that Fragrantica credits in the new stuff like some people do. Um, but I do get this animalic, um, you know, if you pick, if you tried to pick out the vetiver in the base, you might be a little bit hard pressed, but it's there. Um, another very interesting, what some would consider a masterpiece. I'm not saying it is, but I'm saying some would consider this a masterpiece. Uh, from a true definition of a niche house, a guy that basically started bottling, you know, creating his own fragrances and bottling his own fragrances in his in his loft. Uh, and that is Andy Towers' Léa du Désert Marocain. This has vetiver in it. This has coriander and cumin in the top with uh, lavender, labdanum. The labdanum in this is amazing. Um, birch, but the base is amber, cedar, vetiver. Patchouli and oak moss. And, you know, everyone calls this a spicy amber, which it is. The sprayers on the uh, old towers are shite, as we talked about in previous times. Um, I need to try Accord du Desert, which is related to this in a way, but uh, I've never tried it. It's supposedly more intense of a experience, but I've never, I've never tried Accord du Desert. But um, I like this, but I prefer Ombre Sultan, but this has vetiver in it. And another of his compositions, which is my favorite of his compositions, has vetiver, and that's Lone Star Memories. And Lone Star Memories is also an, an amber take, but with leather and myrrh. Um, I love Lone Star Memories. There's geranium, which gives this um, almost... Um, cleanliness after the dirtiness comes, so you get this, uh, the labdanum in this is amazing too, and we were talking, um, on previous videos, previous streams on Eugene's channel in the past about Andy Tower maybe peaking, uh, early in his career. The first couple things he did were absolutely amazing. This is my favorite tower. This uses vetiver in the base. Um, so it starts out kind of dirty, like a cowboy making coffee by a fire, and then it goes into this, you know, maybe he takes a shower with some geranium soap, and then it goes into this earthy, uh, resinous vetiver in the base. And no one talks about this, this is being, having a, you know, a vetiver accord. Now, a lot of these are more fixative. The vetiver is not the star of the show, but it just goes to show what a, um, what a diverse note it is, okay? Another one that people call a masterpiece, and I can see why they would say that, um, is this. This is Gucci Guilty Absolute. This is discontinued but can still be had. It's a designer perfume that acts like a niche perfume. It's basically a leather with cypress and vetiver. And, and that's pretty much it. I mean, it's a very simple composition. But uh, whenever you mix leather and vetiver, you get this, uh, you know, Rich Mitch said it's like getting gasoline or oil on your hands and kind of wiping it on your jeans. Uh, there is this hospital band-aid vibe that it gives off. I have a fragrance that I only wore to bed last night for the first time. I've never given it a full wear. Um, and it's called Philip Pline No Limits, and the packaging is outrageously ridiculous. It, it looks like a credit card that says a million dollar limit on it, with like a death's head in the middle. Um, and, but I scored 50 ml or 75 ml for 50 bucks, so I figured what, what the hey, you know? And this, that smells like a niche version, or a, a designer version of this. Smells like something maybe a little bit easier to wear. The patchouli is a little bit more amped up. I'll talk about that at a later date. But for today, um, Gucci Guilty Absolute, if you're a fan of, you know, leather vetivers, by the way, I should mention, if you like this like I do, 
Lone Star Memories. Check this one out. They kind of both have a bit of that industrial vibe because they mix leather and vetiver. This one has geranium, so it turns a little bit more clean. This has awesome development. This starts somewhere and ends somewhere. This tells a story. You know, this is really art in a bottle. This is a little bit more linear, um, but for a designer, I mean, what do you expect? And it's an Alberto Morias, but one of his better works, in my opinion. Uh, and then I just want to show you a all-time great that uses vetiver as part of a chiffre composition. This is Edmund Rudnitska's Diarella. And this is an older bottle, obviously, the Hound's Tooth bottle. Um, but this is basically a green chiffre, floral chiffre, that uses notes like honeysuckle and... Um, <sighs> um, amazing chiffre. If you're a chiffre lover, you have to get your nose on Diorella. Um, but it uses this citrusy lemon note at the top, so it's a little fruity in a strange way. Uh, but um, there is a peach note in here too, just like a famous chiffre from the past, Mitsuko. But then the base is all about the oak moss, vetiver, patchouli, musk. Very masculine notes. Vetiver historically is a very masculine note. And it was used a lot in the chiffres of the 70s um, to give that dirty base, you know, which was popular at the time. Green at the top, dirty base underneath. And that's why these fragrances work so well for men nowadays, is the base is basically a masculine base. Um, oak moss, vetiver, patchouli, musk. And in fact, the oak moss in this is probably... Um, 10 times stronger than, than an oak moss that you would get nowadays. So uh, that's one. Another one, which might surprise some people, and again, we'll get to the real vetiver fragrances in just a second, but I want to show you how diverse a perfumer or how many different ways a perfumer can use vetiver um, as either a star of the show or as just like a fixative in the base. This is Fahrenheit Le Parfum. This has vetiver in the base. Uh, the top is all about this sweet lavender. You know, there is a touch of that violet leaf from the original Fahrenheit and leather, but it's really toned down. This is really sweet. This is probably too sweet for me. In fact, it's so sweet, I've never even given it a full wear. I've just worn it to bed. Um, and I, I need to force myself to wear some of these just so I can see how it develops more. But the base is all about the benzoin, bourbon, vanilla, and um, vetiver. There's vetiver in the base to tie it together, um, to, to, keep it, to keep it going, to add an extra layer of depth, if you will. And so no one uh, would expect there to be vetiver in the base of this, but there is. Another one where, you know, vetiver is part of an overall composition is Gucci Envy for Men. Now, this is the... Um, this is the Scannon version, and that's actually what you want if you can choose. Uh, I hear there was a reformulation, but uh, the Scannon version is what you want. This is such a great fragrance, but again, this one you can smell the vetiver more in the base than you can here. Um, but this is about basically everything else except vetiver, it's about ginger and cardamom. It's about lavender and um, old school carnation and incense and tobacco. And everyone mentions all those notes, mahogany even. But there's vetiver in the base to tie this all together. So again, used as a fixative, but it's an important part of the composition. And then if you go to the old school Italian fragrances, like uh, here's an example. Aragance, Uomo. Um... This is done in that Italian style. I'm not sure if this is an Italian house, um, but this is basically done with those bright citruses in the top. Think of, um, think of um, Dolce & Gabbana Porome, the original, the Italian version with the sticker. Those bright citruses in the top. This is Narrowly, Mandarin Orange, Petit Gran, Bergamot with green basil, and um, there's lavender, and then the base, vetiver. The vetiver is more prominent in this than some of the other ones that I've talked about so far. 
and uh, cedar and patchouli and sandalwood. Uh, beautiful composition for the warmer weather. I wear this when it's a little bit warmer. Um, this is discontinued but can still be had. And um, this is a great example where the top is all about bright citruses and the bottom is all about the dirtier vetiver, you know, heavier patchouli. That dichotomy, that mixture just works so well. So that's Arrogance Uomo. And then, um, this is one I've talked about recently, but um, not really singled out too much. This is a fragrance by Lacoste called Land. And I did a perfumer's portfolio breakdown on the perfumer Jean Carlio. Um, here's the bottle. Beautiful bottle, by the way. Uh, very early 90s. Uh, and this is a splash. Um, let's see if I can show you the bottom without spilling it everywhere. Okay, so there you go. Looks like I'm shaking like a leaf, but there it is. Um, Sofa Par International, uh, which is what you want if you buy any Lacoste fragrances, by the way. And um, this is basically a spicy vetiver. So this has, um, it feels like it has cumin in the opening. I say there's cumin. Now, there's no cumin note listed on Fragrantica, but it feels like you get a blast of cumin in the opening, kind of like Eau de Hermes, but then it dries to this vetiver oak moss. There's a little bit of juniper to keep it kind of sprightly um, with musk and mace and cyclamen, old school carnation and lavender. Fantastic uh, warmer weather fragrance, in my opinion. And then another one of these compositions that has a million notes in it, but vetiver is part of the base, if you will, is Bijan Man. I actually have a vintage of this coming. This is a current formula. So this is a five-star fragrances formula. You can see it right there at the top. It says five-star fragrances. Um... And I'm going to do a comparison video between the vintage when it was distributed by Bijan Man and the current when it's five star. But I still like this fragrance. So they've done a good job on the reformulation. And I've never heard of five star fragrances company. So sometimes these smaller companies can take something like this and run with it. Um, kind of like Animal. I mentioned Animal Animal, uh, which is... Very similar to the original Amen that uh, they've never sold to another company. Uh, you know they've kind of they've kind of continued to just pump out their 150,000 bottles a year or whatever they sell, and and that's that. And they just keep on keeping on. They don't mess with many reformulations. This has a lot of different notes, and again the vetiver's in the base, uh, but this is old school masculine. If you like um, 80s fragrances, check this one out. And speaking of 80s fragrances, here's another one where vetiver is a part of the composition. Santos de Cartier. This is a vintage bottle. Here, I'll show you the bottom. Distributed by Cartier Inc. Um, and this is not a shouter for an 80s fragrance. It's not as loud as, you know, something like Coros or Antaeus, but I love this just as much. Um... You do have to like the you do have to like the old school 80s style because it definitely has that, you know, that old school masculine feel to it. But this has vetiver in the mid, according to uh Fragrantica. There's a random coconut note in the base too, which I've never smelled a coconut in this fragrance as long as I've lived. But um another composition where vetiver is part of the whole. This is so much more, obviously. But um, I need to give that a full wear soon. And then a, a fresher fragrance that uses vetiver and mint. You do have to like mint to like this fragrance. But this is a good designer. This is what designers used to be. You know, it's green because of that mint. Um, this is actually the reason I never really went for Geranium Pour Monsieur because I already have this. It's Cartier Roadster. And I know they're not the same fragrance, but um, I would wear them in the same situations. So this kind of does the same trick as I mentioned some of the older, you know, Italian style fragrances, right? This does this uh, freshness uh, with like bergamot and mint when, when it opens. 
And then the bass is the heavier notes. French labdanum, vanilla, and vetiver. And so um, Cartier Roadster, if you if if you want a good designer and you can find this at a good price, don't pay two hundred dollars a bottle for this, please. It's not worth two hundred dollars a bottle. But if you can get this at a good price, this is a good designer fragrance to you know be able to wear. It's a great daily driver in the summer. Okay. Now we're going to go to the other side of the aisle where we really start getting into the vetivers. This, I would consider this a vetiver perfume, okay? Even though maybe it's not um, it's not all about vetiver like some of the ones at the end, this is a vetiver composition to me. This is uh, Guerlain Homme Intense, okay? So not the Guerlain you're thinking of, that's coming later, but this... This is a vetiver perfume that works beautifully uh, all year round. Even in, even in the cold, you could wear this, believe it or not. It has this mint, just like Roadster in the top, but also this mojito and rhubarb note, which does not get enough love in the community. Rhubarb, I think, should be used much more in a composition, and in, in it, it adds something, you know, extra, something special to a composition. This also has rum and geranium. With some florals, but it's the vetiver in the base that that makes this. And that's why I consider this a vetiver perfume and a modern vetiver perfume. Um, Terry Vosser created this, I want to say, in 2009. So, you know, 13 years ago. Um, can't believe it's been that long. It just seems like yesterday. But this bottle is discontinued, and obviously now they put it in the Listerine bottle. Um, but... Um, very modern vetiver. If you don't want to wear some of the older style vetivers or an exclusive vetiver of a, a, a perfume that focuses strictly on the note of vetiver, let's say, this is one where there's a beautiful uh, vetiver composition, but there's so much more going around. Um, okay, now let's go old school, if, if, if I may. Um, we're going to go to a house that I don't think I've ever shown this bottle on my channel yet. Uh, this is a little 25 ml that I got, and this is when Victor was the distributor. Um, it's since been given to a house called Visconti de Mad uh, Madrone, which I don't know if there's differences. I've never compared them, but this is Aqua de Selva. Came out forever ago, uh, 1949, and Victor also makes one of my favorite fragrances of all time, uh, Wall Street. Fantastic fragrance. Um, and so they were making fragrances in the 80s. They would put that V on the back of their bottles. Uh, but this is a fougere, an aromatic fougere, that does a very similar trick. Again, Italian-style fragrances like this trick. So what they do is they use this freshness at the top. So there's lavender... The citruses, you've got lemon, bergamot, um, and rosemary, which is also in Paco Rabanne Pour Homme, one of the best uses of rosemary there. And then you have pine, you have, th you have thyme, clary sage, cloves, geranium, and then you get into the base with peat and vetiver and cedar and musk. So that's where a little bit of that dirtiness starts to come in underneath, but this is a very sharp, you know in your face, fresh opening for, um, for warm days. Now this doesn't last very long. It lasts about four hours on my skin, but, um, you know, if you're into old school, those old school citrus fragrances, check this one out. This is one not many people talk about. And then we're going to go to a new acquisition of mine, which I also have not gotten a chance to give a full wear to, but I will very soon. This is called Filenagil by Serge Loutons. Look at the color of that juice. Just absolutely glorious. So this is basically like this dirty pine, okay? Think of it like this dirty pine resin fragrance that has been that there's a fire in the background, okay, you can sense the smoke while you're, while you're, you stuck your hand on a tree to rest from walking and you got pine sap on your hand and you're smelling it, but you're also smelling the beautiful open blue sky. It's definitely a blue sky day, okay, not a cloud in the sky. And you smell smoke in the background, okay, with the balsam fir resins on your hands and, and the vetiver 
is what adds that earthy, dark undertone to the fragrance. And so vetiver is a big part of this. Even though everyone talks about the pine and the incense and there's a bit of dried fruit feel as well here, those are all important. But I think without the vetiver, you wouldn't, it would be very hard to create that forest floor feel without it. So, feel and agil, um, one of my best buys this year. And I'm very glad to have found an older bottle and I was able to kind of talk them down a little bit. I did, have to, I did have to wait a month for it to get here, but I guess I can't complain too much. And then let's go to the House of Caron, which um, just discontinued this fragrance, I believe, which is an absolute shame because this came out in 1985. And I'll show you the older bottle, but if you look it up on Fragrantica, um, you'll see the newer bottle. This is... Uh, translated to Caron's third man and it's written like this it's written like that le3 e h o m m e on fragrantica if you want to look it up um les trois hommes and um this fragrance is a fantastic day-to-day -day fragrance i think because it's so masculine but in a very appealing way. The next Caron I'm going to show you is the exact opposite, which I like the other one more because I like bold fragrances. Um, this is a this is a fragrance where um, even though there's no leather note, you do get a vibe of Bellamy. This came out a couple years before. It's almost like a precursor, a more aromatic, floral version of Bellamy. Uh, it's got lavender, citruses, there's an anise note in here, but it's not super prominent, but you do get it in the opening with some rosemary, coriander, carnation, and then the floral heart, jasmine, geranium, and rose, oak moss, vetiver, vanilla, tonka bean, cedar, patchouli, and musk. So this also has a slight forest for floor feel, not like the next, not as much as the next one. The next one is, you know, forest floor to the max. You fell asleep and you know, the leaves are decomposing around you. This one is a lot cleaner, but it still gives a little bit of that vibe. And I love this fragrance as a day. If you just wanted a daily driver, Third Man is amazing. This is an old tester that I bought and it, it just got discontinued, but they were making bottles up until last year, if I'm not mistaken. And so if you can find it, at even the newer composition is quite good. Um, I would grab this. There's oak moss. The difference is the oak moss is a little bit more turned up here. If you can find a vintage like this at a good price, this is what the bottle looks like. The cap almost just looks like this square, you know, cap that goes on top. Nothing special like this brown looking cap. Um, but Third Man is, uh, is an awesome fragrance. Almost no one talks about if you said this is my favorite Caron, Caron fragrance, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't argue with you because I think it's a great composition. But my favorite is Yatagan. Um, this is a vintage bottle, and this is dirty forest floor to the max with castorium. And the way that they did it is they they used a couple notes. So when you first spray you get this green, almost decaying galbanum with lavender. Uh, and there's a big pine note here. So if you like fragrances like Filanagil, you can check out stuff like Yadigan, even though they're different. There's a huge oak moss in this. This is an oak moss and... Um, it's so good. Oak moss, leather, Labdanum, it's a little bit resinous because of the uh, labdanum and styrax combo, but the vetiver and pine give this decaying forest floor feel that I love. People complain that the new one doesn't last as long, you know, as the vintage. If you can find an older bottle, grab it. I have an even older bottle than this as a backup um, where it had the, you know, sword looking uh, design the older Caron design, but um, I love this fragrance and definitely backup bottle worthy and vetiver is a big part of the composition, even though I don't think it's listed on Fragrantica as a note, big part of the composition to my nose. Um, okay, now we're going to go to a Creed and it's not the Creed you're thinking about. That one's coming later. This one, um, 
is Bois de Portugal. This is probably the classier uh, use of vetiver. This is all about labdanum, though. I'm sorry, lavender. Um, this is one of my favorite lavender perfumes. Uh, again, if you said it's your favorite creed, I would not fault you. It's a beautiful, uh, simple but beautiful composition of bergamot in the top, lavender in the mid, sandalwood, cedar, vetiver, and ambergris in the base. And um, this is a 2018 bottle. This is not an older bottle, I don't think. Let's see. Yeah, this is a 2018 bottle. Um, and so if you can find something pre-2016, pre-2012 even, um, definitely pre the reform to 100 ml. And this is, they were already doing 100 ml bottles then, but Boada Portugal was kept in good shape. It was not like Aventus where they reformulated it to death just because it, it, it wasn't as popular. So there was no, I don't think they had the chance to make a huge amount of money by reformulating it. Um, but, uh, the vetiver in this, again, this is a barbershop, um, this is a barbershop fragrance and very classy. You know, the vetiver is not super dirty in this, um, but for, for me, this is a beautiful spring fragrance, uh, and vetiver is a big part of the composition. And then we're going to go to the house of Amouage. I have, um three Amouage fragrances for you today. The first is Beloved Man. So you can see right there on the collar, it says Beloved Man, back when they used to write the name on the collar. And um, this was supposed to be almost like a limited, it also says it on the side, I think this was supposed to be like a limited run. Um, this is the only Amouage that I own that has this strange sticker put on the bottom. I bought this when it first came out uh, from the Amouage website. And this is probably the, um, this is probably the most vetiver heavy Amouage. When I thought of vetiver and Amouage, this is the one that came to mind. Although there's another couple that I'm going to show you that vetiver is a big part, but this is the closest thing to a vetiver perfume that I would say Amouage has. But what they've done is they've taken this uh, fresh grapefruit, and it's definitely grapefruit. There's no mistaking it. They've taken this grapefruit, and they've mixed it with this peppery cardamom for spice with elemi, and they've mixed that with a vetiver and uh, leather and guyac wood base. There's a touch of orris to make it a little bit powdery, but I'll tell you what, on summer days... Um, if you want an amouage, so it doesn't have that, um, it doesn't have the, it feels a little bit like there's olibanum in this, but it's Elemi, and it's probably one of the best done Elemi perfumes I own. Uh, this gets no love, zero. I, I don't hear anyone talking about this. Um, and Beloved Man, um, was done by a couple under the radar perfumers too, Alexandria Carlin, and Emile uh, Bevier Copperman. I don't know who they are or what else they've done. But, uh, you know, when Christopher Chong had, had his hand in the mix here, they always put out amazing stuff. And I love the presentation. Such a classy presentation. You know, the, the magnetic cap, it just, it, it all works so well. I wish I had a pre, I wish I had a pre-magnetic, I wish I had more uh, non-magnetic cap amouages, but I'm still very happy with this. I don't know if it's been reformulated. I don't even know if they're still offering this. But um, one of the one of the few summer uh, amouages to me, and then an amouage that really harkens back to the old school. Okay, so think about '80s fragrances like uh, Fahrenheit. If you like fragrances like Fahrenheit, if you like fragrances like Gray Flannel, check out Portrayal Man and look at the bottle. That oil, grease, you know, sheen on the bottle. Um, this is a very simple composition. It's violet leaf in the top and very prominent violet leaf. If you miss the Fahrenheit days of the 80s and, and early 90s when that gasoline accord would hit you, check this out. Uh, I don't know how they pulled it off, but um, 
this is basically three notes, violet leaf, vetiver, and what they call Canary Islands Juniper or Cade Oil. And, um, you know, it, uh, it's something that is also an all year round fragrance to me. I would wear this anytime. I bought this when it first got released from the Amouage website. Um, it, it feels like maybe there's a little bit of patchouli in there too, even though it's not listed, maybe sandalwood, maybe, but, um, uh, the Violet Leaf Vetiver and, and Canary Island Juniper is the star of the show. But if you like Fahrenheit, check this out. This is like a niche Fahrenheit. Took a little bit to grow on me because I was not expecting this from an Amouage. But uh, grow on me it has. And then probably the most underrated Amouage of all time. Definitely one of the most beautiful fragrances I've ever smelled, ever. And I don't know who the perfumer is, but rumor is it's a Jean-Claude Elena. I don't know if that's true or not, but uh, this is Dia Man. And Dia Man, my God, uh, if I had to, if I had to put it in uh, order as far as uh, uh, vetiver perfumes go, Dia Man. Uh, would be right behind Beloved Man for Vetiver being the main role because there's other things here going on. So it's not just Vetiver. There's incense, there's plum, and there's one of the most beautiful floral notes I've ever smelled in my life in this fragrance. And it's a it's a note of peony. And peony is a flower that can be right next to you and you can't smell it. I mean, it's a very soft flower. But if you put your nose to it, it's one of the most narcotic, one of the most beautiful floral smells that you will ever find. And it's in this fragrance. There's Brazilian rosewood and vetiver and leather and amber and patchouli in the base. And um, my God. So this isn't a screamer, okay? This is why it doesn't get much talk. But it's so beautiful. Um, I have an older bottle when they used to write on the bottom of the bottles like this. They don't do this anymore. But it, it must have been right when they switched to the magnetic cap. Um, and I'll tell you what, this fragrance, Dia Man, if you want to smell something amazing, wear this. It, it, so it lasts a long time. People give it a hard time for longevity. Longevity is not an issue. It's projection. It doesn't project. Just like the peony flower doesn't project, this doesn't project. But man, what a composition. If you're into just, if you're wearing perfume for yourself, Check this one out. Again, vetiver is a big part of it. And so now we're getting into some of the big hitters. Um, I'm going to show you Timbuktu next. This is a Bertrand du Chafour. And what he's done is he's basically taken this um, incense vetiver combo, mixed in papyrus, just like my scent of the day. Okay. So vetiver and papyrus go very well together. Um, and he's added the note of green mango. So Fragrantica says mango. Don't think regular mango. Think green mango, okay? With spicy pink pepper and cardamom and this myrrh, patchouli, benzoin, resinous type base. So it's vetiver and papyrus. Uh, it's patchouli and myrrh and incense. And then this green mango at the top to give it some... Um, to give it some... Something interesting, something different. And that green mango is so refreshing when it's hot out. Uh, I absolutely love this fragrance. Not a banger. Uh, it's not going to last forever. It's not going to scream and go grab somebody across the room. So it'll only last about four to six hours on my skin. But um, what a fragrance. You know, it's if, if you're just buying fragrances for beast mode projection, don't, don't bother with this. But if you're buying it for breaking down the beauty of, of the fragrance, you have to check out Timbuktu. There's also a note of Karo Karunde flower in there, which is supposed to be this African flower used in uh, many traditional ceremonies. I'm not familiar with that flower. One more vetiver from uh, um, L'Artisan is um, Zonka. So it's not the one you're expecting. They have a vetiver only. They have a vetiver perfume, I think, but I don't own it. This also uses the note of peony. Just like in Dia Man. So these two, if you're interested in that beautiful peony note, check these two out. Um, two of the best peony fragrances I've ever come across. There, it, Not many fragrances use it because, again, it's a very 
subtle flower, but um, this is a beautiful fragrance. It uses a very similar composition as Timbuktu to me, but there's some changes, okay? So there's still the incense and vetiver. Uh, there's still the spicy cardamom and papyrus, so there's a lot of similarities. But the iris is amped up here, so it's a little bit more powdery. And there's a note of lychee, um, which lychee is also used in um, The Moon by Frederick Mall, which is a very expensive fragrance. And there's a note of white tea in this. And so this is this very relaxing, very contemplative fragrance, you know. If you just want to sit in your thoughts, wear Zonka. Uh, it's amazing. And then we're going to go to the house of um, Atkinson's. And this is a fragrance called Rockford with the bear that everyone loves on the front. Uh, and this is a very... Uh, bright vetiver. I would probably wear this in the spring and the summer. Um, it does have a little bit of dirtiness underneath because it has that peat note, um, you know, that mixes with the vetiver. There's also a note of mace in here and sandalwood, uh, but it's the, it's, it's, there's lab, old school lavender and lemon and bergamot in the top. This is discontinued, by the way. Um, but uh, when it comes, if you want a, a brighter vetiver fragrance, check this one out. Also, one that is in the same ballpark. It's not exactly the same, obviously. But I'll say in the same ballpark is a fragrance called Dunhill Edition. Now, Dunhill Edition, I don't have a full bottle of, as you can see. I have this little mini. This is how they used to give samples back in the day. Used to be an actual mini bottle of the fragrance itself. I just won't spend the kind of money that vintage Dunhill Edition bottles are going for nowadays. I would love one, but I'm not going to spend the kind of money on it. It's not worth it to me. But this kind of takes that DNA of, of, um, of Rockford and amps it up a bit with some more florals and some heavier fur, balsam furs. So it really gives off this 80s vibe, which I absolutely love. This is another summer banger for me. Um, I would definitely wear this in the summer. I wish I had a full bottle, but, um, you know, I'll do a, I'll do a, uh, a, a breakdown of this before I use this whole 5 ml. And then there is something I want to go back to that I forgot. Um, uh, before I go to the next fragrance, I want to go back to this. So I mentioned Portrayal Man, and I should have mentioned this right after Portrayal Man. This has this, um this violet leaf fuel type of cord, right? So if you if you want to smell something similar and you don't want to spend as much money, check this fragrance out. This is a fragrance by uh, Calm de Garcon called Girl. And it's actually a Pharrell Williams fragrance, but it's made by Calm de Garcon. And the artist Cause may design this with the dead eyes, kind of a uh, weird bottle, but um, this takes that Fahrenheit type DNA, but adds a note of lavender in it, which makes it a little different. Um, and the base is all about cedar and vetiver and sandalwood and patchouli. Winning combination. Um, great masculine. You used to be able to get this for, oh gosh, I don't know. Um... You used to be able to get this for 20 bucks. I think that's how much I got this tester for. Now that it's discontinued, it's going for much higher. But if you can get this for a good price, if you don't want to pay Amouage Portrayal Man prices, check out um, Girl, uh, unisex. But to me, it leans masculine. I think it leans masculine uh, because of the old school lavender and that Fahrenheit type violet leaf accord. Um... But, it, but it's supposed to be completely unisex. Okay, next we're going to go to another one of my favorite... Um, another one of my favorite summer vetiver fragrances. And this is one of the reasons I never bought Terre de Hermes. Actually, I don't own Terre. It's not on the list. Uh, some people will say that is a travesty. But um, I, I didn't buy it because I own this. This is Dunhill's Icon. Now, Dunhill's Icon takes the vetiver uh, perfume that 
It goes in the same direction as um, Terra de Hermes, but it adds a note of narrowly in the top, which is just gorgeous. The narrowly in the top of this perfume is unbelievable. One of my favorite narrowly notes I've ever smelled. Uh, and it mixes in this peppery, uh, again, peppery cardamom uh, with uh, some fresh notes like uh, juniper, lavender. Uh, there is iris in this too, which makes it a little bit powdery. Iris adds another dimension to me. Uh, the vetiver's in the base, okay? There's also a note of oud, but it's kind of like a ghost oud. I think they're using vetiver and oud as a fixative here, but I love this perfume. This is the best perfume Dunhill has ever came out with, in my opinion. And then we're going to go, now we're hitting the home stretch, okay? We're going to go to the big hitters. So the first one we're going to go to is a fragrance called Private Label. Now, I told you Private Label um, is a fragrance that is almost like a niche fragrance of my scent of the day. This is all about, um, Private Label is all about papyrus and vetiver to me. It's all about papyrus and vetiver, but it's done so, so very well. Uh, because it, it, it's papyrus and vetiver, but with this leathery type feel with patchouli amping it all up. That's basically it. It's a very simple composition, um, but it's very well done. And it's my favorite, um, it's my favorite perfume from Cecile Zerokian by far, hands down my favorite. Um, so papyrus, vetiver, leather with a little bit of patchouli and there's labdanum too so there's a little resinous feel underneath it all it's so powerful and it's it's one of the best daily drivers you could have if you're if you just want a like i said vetiver is an austere note so if you want if you want to say hey i'm the boss and i'm over here okay you can come in my office and talk to me but we're not going to be we're not going to be bros and hang out and go to the bar afterwards right I'm, I'm here and you're here and that's the way it's got to be. We have to keep a hierarchy. As a daily driver, this is perfect. Absolutely perfect. It's a little dirty. The vetiver feels dark like an Ancre Noir, which I love. Oh, so good. Now, if you want something that to me, again, is a little bit easier to wear. I said this yesterday or the day before. But um, the next one is Incident Diplomatique, and this came out five or six years after Private Label. Um, and this vetiver is a little bit easier for me to wear. I, or I would say maybe not me, but a little bit easier for most people to wear because it mixes a couple different types of vetiver. So it plays the same trick that one of the last vetivers I'm going to show you is and I'm going to get a full bottle of does, and that's that it mixes multiple types of vetivers okay so you have the dirty uh java vetiver in here but you also have the clean haitian vetiver uh and it mixes with this nutmeg which like puts a bow on everything nutmeg nutmeg is almost like putting all the ingredients in a bag you're not you know you're not letting them out you're not letting them run wild nutmeg kind of keeps everything in its place and there's this patchouli and sandalwood Beautiful sandalwood, by the way. Javoy does sandalwood in one of the best ways I've ever smelled sandalwood from a niche house. Uh, they have a fragrance that I mentioned yesterday called L'Enfant Terrible, which is discontinued, but it's one of my favorite sandalwood perfumes. But uh, Incident Diplomatique, if you're a vetiver lover, you have to smell this. It is amazing. I think it's a little bit easier to wear than private label, because private label is just in your face, you know, beast. Um, but they both fall into a similar category, if you will. Um, and then I'm going to show you one that I don't think I've ever shown on this channel before. This is from the House of Bois 1920, and this is called Vetiver Ambrato. Now, Vetiver Ambrato really threw me off. Because I think they should have reversed those words. I think it should have been Ambrato Vetiver because this is more amber first with vetiver backing it up. It's not a vetiver perfume with, with amber. It's amber and even a little bit of powdery vanilla. 
with vetiver. It's an amazing composition, though. It's a shame no one talks about these. This is a house that gets no love. Um, this is the vintage EDT. I think they've reformulated these into EDP formulations. Uh, so I've never smelled the Eau de Parfum. But um, if you get a chance and you find the EDT of this at a good price, and you like vanilla fragrances like Shalimar, Okay, this is not exactly Shalimar because there's a lot of other notes in this that Shalimar doesn't have. There's tobacco and, and vetiver and sandalwood. But um, boy, I'll tell you what, this is a great, great fragrance. And um, it's almost like a... It's almost like a Shalimar that tends to go more with a, um, with a little bit of a vetiver backbone, if you will. And once you smell the vetiver in here, you will really appreciate it because it kind of plays peekaboo. It comes and goes, but um, great fragrance. I wish more people would talk about this. Um, and then probably one of my favorite vetiver perfumes to wear because I love leather so much. And I think Jean-Claude Elena did a, this is a, this is a, a masterpiece to me, his reformulation or creation or, or flanker of this, one of my favorite flankers of all time. This is Bellamy Vetiver. Now, you know how much I love the original Bellamy. It's my favorite fragrance of all time. Bellamy Vetiver, and Jean-Claude Elena did something here that I don't think he does very often. He was very heavy-handed with this perfume. So what I mean by that is normally he likes things to be ethereal, light, airy, transparent, you know, Eugene says it's almost like uh, painting with watercolors. Here, let me wipe this bottle off for you, Eugene. Um, since I gave you a shout out, I don't want to get a ticket. Um, but what he did here is he kept the, you know, Bella Me was a very in-your-face fragrance, right? Very, very, very um, strong-handed, uh, very confident, very... Um, you know, very 1980s, if you will. There were there was big leather, big oak moss, big carnation, big big all that stuff in the old one, big iris, big styrax. He took this, and you know he kept the big leather, and he kept the big styrax and the big carnation, and he added civet, and he added elemy, and he added vetiver, and. This is such a great bang for your buck. If you can get this for under a hundred bucks, um, you, you're, I mean, it's a 10 out of 10. This is a, if I rated fragrances, this would be a 10. Uh, it didn't make my top 10 of all time because I put the regular Bellamy in there. But boy, I don't, there's not much of a drop off in enjoyment for me when I wear Bellamy Vetiver. So, um, you know, it's it's one that definitely deserves to be talked about more. And then we're going to get into the Encre Noir line. And this is Encre Noir Sport. Now, this, actually, before I do that, let me do one thing. Let me just mention something that I set aside. I wanted to show you guys. Um, and what I want to show you is this. This is Roja's Fetish. So this is a updated version of Bellamy by Roja. Okay. And Roja did the same thing that Jean-Claude Elena did. He took Bellamy and he updated it. He roja it, if you will. There's his signature Jasmine Narrowly Violet Rose combo here with Dirty Castorium and Labdanum. He amped the Labdanum up. And guess what note he added? Vetiver. He added Vetiver. Uh, and there's also Vetiver in Pure Distance M which I'm not going to show you, but Pure Distance M has vetiver. So these are leather fragrances that use the note of vetiver in a way that, um, you know, complements the whole thing. But it's it's in the same realm as Bellamy vetiver uh, and, and Bellamy. So I figured I would show you fetish. And then we'll go to Encre Noir Sport. Now, Encre Noir Sport is probably the closest fragrance to... Um, vetiver absolute that you'll ever smell uh this is an absolute this series the bang for the buck is you know value for money is through the roof with with encre noir i need to just get the original 
even though it's not my favorite, um, I need to get the original. There, there is a watery note in this that tends to put people off. It doesn't put me off because the vetiver is done so well that uh, it overshadows that watery note. Normally, I don't like aquatic notes. Um, there's a watery note in Philip Pline's um, No Limits, which is supposed to be close to this, which really put me off in the opening. But after it went away... I enjoyed that fragrance, excuse me, more. There's a watery note here too, but it doesn't put me off. I wear this more in summer. And this has bourbon vetiver and Haitian vetiver. And then we'll go to my favorite Ancre Noir, which is the Al Extreme. Now, there's an interesting thing about the Al Extreme, about, you know, you read Fragrantica comments, a lot of people say this doesn't perform for them which I don't understand it because to me, this is a beast. This thing lasts for, I don't know, 10 hours on my skin easily. Uh, I can smell it the next morning every single time I wear it. Uh, and so one, pro, I, I want to say it's my favorite vetiver, but I'm not going to say that this time. I've said that before, but I want to highlight another vetiver coming up that I'm going to get a full bottle of. But uh, this is this is tied for my favorite vetiver fragrance. Let's let's say that Ancre Noir Al Extreme adds this um, adds this ambery, resinous, you know, warm, smoky thing underneath it all. Vetiver can be smoky on its own, um, but this adds this Elemi resin, which acts a little bit like olibanum. It gives off this this. Uh, smoky feel but there's also incense here and there's orris and then there's haitian vetiver and vetiver the same vetiver combo um or no i'm sorry it's a different vetiver combo from uh Ancre noir sport according to fragrantica who knows if that's true or not with the note of cypress and i love cypress and guys so good i just want to wear this every time i every time i smell it um and then I'm going to show you a couple rosias. I'm going to show you one that doesn't have vetiver, but my nose says there's vetiver in this, so I'm going to show it to you. And that's Oligarch. Now, there's no vetiver listed. There's a million notes in this, by the way. Lavender, bergamot, lime, lemon, thyme, orange blossom, jasmine from grass, lily, champaca, flower, black currant, apple. There is grass listed, though, in Parfumo. I will tell you that. So there's not vetiver listed, but there's grass listed, which, I don't know. I would think Roja would use vetiver, but whatever. There's mate, galbanum, pink pepper, aniseed, patchouli, oak moss, cedar, juniper, vanilla, tonka, amber, iris, birch, leather, ambergris, musk. It all comes out to a niche version of Terre de Hermes. Um, so I never bought tear because I have this and I have this. So I never bought tear, but maybe I'll correct that wrong one day. Uh, oligarch, if you're going to put on a suit in the summer, no-brainer. Beautiful fragrance. Um, and since it's an EDP and not a parfum, it is a much better price point. Now, one thing I should mention is just a month ago, or, a month, or you know, last month in January, Roja Parfums put out Oligarch Parfum for $500, okay? So... Don't splurge on the Parfum if you can still get the EDP. The uh, EDP is more than enough. Okay, trust me on that. I've never smelled the Parfum, but from my experience, um, if you can get the EDP versions of Erosia, you're going to get just as much enjoyment, most likely, out of it as the Parfum. I actually prefer uh, Scandal in the, ED the discontinued EDP. Um, so there you go. All you get is you get this cap that's gold instead of the one that has the diamonds, the crystals in it. That's that's really the biggest difference is this cap right here. They don't have to pay for Swarovski's crystals. Um, but other than that, so what? Go for the EDP. Um, okay, and then we'll talk about the Roja that deserves to be on this list. And that is Vetiver Parfum. Now, here's one where I will say the Parfum is worth it, uh, after just saying the Parfum is not worth it, uh, because 
the vetiver cologne that I smelled, they have a vetiver cologne that comes in this green bottle. Shite. I didn't like it at all. Um, I like this more because this has this darker vetiver feel, this smokier, deeper, more resinous feel, which I like much more than the um, uh, Parfum Cologne, which is softened up. It's more sprightly, if you will. Okay, so Vetiver Parfum is one of the parfums that I would recommend going for because it's a little bit darker, but you're still spending ridiculous money for a Vetiver. I would probably say just pass on this unless you're a Roja fanboy. Um, and then we'll go to a Creed Original Vetiver, which uh, this is one of my favorite Vetivers to wear in the summer, in the heat, because there's beautiful citruses in the top. Uh, it's compared to Mugler's Cologne, which was done by Alberto Mordias. There's rumors swirling that he also did Vetiver, original Vetiver. I don't know if that's true or not, but um, the Creeds claim that they use all parts of the Vetiver plant in this. Uh, I don't know if that's true or not either. Um, but uh, what I do know is that there's a beautiful ginger note in the opening, which makes it very fresh and easy to wear in the heat and ambergris in the base, which make, adds a little bit of depth. So, if you like clean vetivers, check this one out. This is Haitian vetiver. Again, it's a clean vetiver. And then probably the best vetiver fragrance, or the, or the benchmark vetiver fragrance, is Guerlain's Vetiver. Now, this is not my favorite vetiver fragrance to wear, but I can appreciate it for what it is. This has this uh, tobacco note in it as well, which not a lot of people give this credit as a tobacco perfume, but it's a vetiver with citruses and tobacco. There's old school carnation in this. Um, the citruses are gorgeous too. Um, a little bit of guerlainade, uh, but it's very green. At least in this vintage bottle, the um, uh, frosted bottle, if you will, um, very green. When I wear this in the heat, it just, it smells like you're smelling freshly cut grass sometimes. But, um, really, really, uh, the gold standard. If you've never tried Guerlain Vetiver, you are missing out. Then, the only other Vetiver perfume I plan on buying as long as I live, um, the one that I think is probably the best if you want just a king vetiver, this is it. This is Nishane's Sultan Vetiver. And uh, I, I smelled this on my hand when I woke up this morning. It has absolute beast mode performance. I think I got some on my lip there. I'm going to smell that for days. Um, and... This stuff is out of this world. It uses four types of vetiver. Four. Um, and this is the King Vetiver. And it has leather. And I love, I really enjoy wearing this. It's only the second time I wore it yesterday, I believe. Um, but you can see I put a pretty good dent in it. I'm going to get a full bottle. I'm going to try to get a full bottle. Uh, this has an anise note in the top. It has a neroli note in the mid. It has a leather note in the base. But it's vetiver, vetiver, vetiver. All this has all the different facets of vetiver. It's clean, you know. It's woody. It's it's dirty. It's earthy. It's smoky. <sighs> Amazing. Um, and you know, this is a vetiver. That's a pure vetiver that I can get behind. I said I like it as part of a composition, as I mentioned. But this is full bottle worthy and I will be getting one. So, if there's some vetivers I missed, I know I don't have Frederick Mall's Vetiver Extraordinaire. I know I don't have, um, you know, Serge Luton's Vetiver. I know there's a lot of other vetivers out there. You can't own everything. Um, but I hope this has given you at least a good breakdown of the note of vetiver. I hope it's given you some ideas of some potential uh, products to put on your to sniff list. And if you guys have any for me, please let me know again. Thank you for the 500 subscriber mark. Thank you for always commenting and watching. Cheers. I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye-bye.